Hello, everybody. Welcome to Industry Insights. Today, we have the privilege of having Dr. Vinay Prakash, the CEO of Adani Natural Resources, with us. Thank you, Dr. Vinay Prakash, for making the time to join us. I truly appreciate uh, your sparing some time for us here at ISB. Uh, for everyone, I'll introduce you as uh, a veteran of the mining industry uh, and of more or less the natural resources industry of the country. Uh, he has uh, he started as a mechanical engineer, worked on the shop floor, uh, went on through a series of functions like procurement and supply chain and so on, and became a CEO at a very, very young age. And uh, today, uh, he manages the largest portfolio within the Adani uh, business. And um, we are very privileged to have you with us, Dr. Prakash. Thank, thanks for having me here. Wonderful. So let me get this kicked off by um, asking you um, a question about your own leadership journey. Uh, you've been a CEO for a very long time. Uh, before that, you've managed large teams. Tell us a little bit about your own journey, the crucible moments that you've had in your journey, and, and what have you sort of gleaned from those? What learnings have you got from those? So, Bob, if I take you through my journey, first, uh, I think it's 30 years of experience now, three decades of experience, which has transformed me for from being a young GET at one time to now uh, a CEO of Natural Resources, which comprises of many businesses of uh, Adani Group. Uh, in fact, uh, if you uh, really ask me for last 30 years, I have seen uh, a lot of failures and successes. And somehow, uh, you know, uh, the good thing which I've learned from my friends and my seniors also is to really accept your failure. So whenever a failure has happened and you have accepted it and you have really chalked down as where you have gone wrong, uh, it has actually helped you in, in the future to see that you don't repeat the mistake again and uh, you learn from your mistakes and you put it uh, uh, up front to take a corrective action. You know, it becomes a problem for many of uh, us is to admit your mistake. Mm -hmm. I think even after 30 years also, if I do any mistake, I am able to accept it. Mm -hmm. This is something which has been a great learning for me in, in last three decades. Uh, in terms of leadership uh, style, I think I have been a pace setter uh, for for first 25 years. Um, so first, if I talk about my businesses, uh, if you talk about my uh, 12 or 13 business, which we can take it into three verticals. Uh, one business is T20 in terms of cricket parlance. Second business is uh, your five-day match. And the third business is your uh, uh, one-day match. So yes. that, that that's the difference of business I have. So in one business, I have to give a decision on an immediate basis. Second business, I can you know uh, 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 give the decision or leave the decision to my team members to take and you know and come out with some options uh, to me and give me the what is the right decision or wrong decision and then on that uh, we can take a decision jointly also and third is where you know we can simply sit uh, come out with all the option we can put all type of uh, technology initiatives to see as how things are coming up and then we can uh, uh, take a decision so uh, from being a pay sitter in one business to a person who is actually working with a team as a team member team leader and sometime letting someone lead to that lead the team also is what has been uh, uh, the business uh, uh, style of different leadership in the different businesses and uh, i've been very fortunate to work with uh, two big uh, leaders uh, one uh, started with aditya bilag group for 8 years uh, good learning for discipline uh, good learning for how your documentation has to be done, paperwork has to be done, how you have to follow hierarchical uh, uh, structure, how you have to work in a team, getting into Adani group directly working with Mr. Gautam Adani himself, uh, to learn as how you have to take a fast decision, oh. how you have to think unconventional. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, one of the great things which I have learned from him is that uh, whenever you put up anything uh, to him, he always try to see if there's any other way to handle this situation. Oh. Oh. And that gives you more options, more opportunities to do better than what your other friends, other competitors are doing. Mm -hmm. And that has actually helped uh, you know uh, me to really get into many transformation businesses, 
in fact uh, many business which came to me in adani group also came with uh, a lot of issues and with the help of team only you know in fact i was mentioning in uh, in our conference also that uh, uh, whenever i was not doing about the business i actually motivate people to come out with uh, a document called uh, learn by my mistake and that document actually helped us to create a document which helped to transform the business yes. by themselves only because they only put up the message saying that these were my mistakes and how i should have actually corrected this and since they have prepared the document it actually had helped uh, them to uh, you know use those uh, papers to transform the business and that's how the business got transformed so you know i'll not say it is one leadership style is a mix of many thing yeah. which had helped me to come to this point fantastic and i particularly love the example you gave uh, i know you talked about it at the conference also about learning from mistakes and i also know that uh, it mustn't have been easy to get others to admit to mistakes right because corporate typically mistakes is a badge of honor that you carry to your grave right which means if you admit mistakes you are in trouble you don't have anything wrong exactly so how did you create that culture in your organization where people don't mind uh, 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 admitting mistakes and know that they are not going to get penalized or they're not going to get victimized uh, this is something which you know i've understood from the story which i've read about mr gautam adani himself so you know uh, uh, when i joined uh, them in 2001 one of the story which was very popular at that time was that uh, uh, there was a trader who did some deal in which they have lost money mm-hmm. and since he lost money he said that uh, i will not continue with the company and i leave the company and on which chairman said that no uh, i don't want you to co- leave the company because you have learned from this mistake and since you learned from this mistake i don't want this learning to go to someone else yeah. i want this learning to be used in my uh, business only so we continue with the uh, with the business and then that person did very well so that was the first you know story which i learned from in mm-hmm. uh, from others in dani group mm-hmm. so that gave me a very clear comfort that in the company if you do an unintentional mistake and you are owning that mistake it will help you to so. grow faster because since you know the mistake now you have uh, uh, discuss about the corrective action it will not get repeated right right so this was the my learning which i started using now how i actually uh, got into a situation where i could convince people to own their mistake uh, you know this document which i was talking about was in a mine in indonesia where when i asked and i was 7 days old in that mine because that responsibility was given me uh, in 2011 12 So when I asked people to write down their mistake uh, for the first two days, there was the complete silence. Yeah. So what I did, I said that since I have also been there in uh, in this business for last seven days now, I write down what is my mistake. So I wrote down a, a complete one sheet writing whatever mistakes I have done in last seven days and what mistake I have done in in my previous businesses also, which I should have corrected, and I will get it corrected and I'll I'll, I'll handle it in this manner. when i created that document and made it public to everyone people started feeling that no there is no penalty per se on this writing yeah. and they started writing that document mm-hmm. that's how the document was created at that time then thereafter when i realized that this is actually giving me a lot of advantages uh, in all the presentation which i uh, used to give at that time to our chairman was have always having the first sheet saying that uh, what mistakes we have done in this performance year uh what actions we are taking now to make sure Wonderful. that this is not getting repeated so first two three pages was always about our shortcomings our failures and all the time when you know whenever this meeting happens uh, my team members also uh, participate in that those meetings uh they used to see that chairman was never getting angry on mm. uh, on me on sharing this uh, feedbacks right and unlike any other businesses any other ceos any other uh, business head my reviews were always very nice comfortable uh, with a person who has been known for being a very t- strong taskmaster uh, angry man reacting on uh, on 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 people not accepting their mistakes so by this actually i i i have been in position to you know uh, uh, train people tell them that look Sorry. this is something which which you start with in your in your position you are going to have a good time with him because he likes people admitting their mistakes you know if it is an intentional mistake then he says okay fine you mm. go ahead and make sure that you don't repeat that mm. 
so that culture was something which came Quite from chairman i adopted that culture and somehow i been in position to uh, yes, uh, give it to all of my team members also it's a wonderful story because i think what this shows is the importance of role modeling by a leader you know it, if a leader it does it and leads by example i think people also because in a way you're showing your own vulnerability yeah and and that then gives people the comfort open. Uh, yeah. if you're not going to get uh, punished for any mistakes which you have done and if you're owning it yeah. it shows that you know and and any business uh, and any functions if you take a decision if you take a decision there is always going to be right or wrong decision correct it can never be 100% right it cannot be correct. 100% wrong oh, absolutely so, right so, there is of course the balance the the flip side of it which is people may take advantage of that that you know this is a place where mistakes are tolerated so but i'm sure you're saying i'll allow one mistake not so, allow so, you to repeat so I, it <laughs> i said two words in this one is unintentional mistake unintentional mistake second is it is not getting repeated yes not getting repeated. because i'm writing down what type of corrective action i'm going to take yes. so if a mistake has happened i have written down what corrective action i have taken and the second time if i'm going to write the same mistake and i'm not talking about the corrective action which i have taken right. it means that this mistake is not unintentional it is an intentional mistake very right so i think very well said very well said because you know people make this uh, thing about fail fast fail forward yeah, it's become very fashionable to talk about it actually what you're saying is if you even if you want to fail fail intelligently yeah, <laughs> fail <laughs> fail to get something you know fail to get something yeah, exactly yeah, to learn like, something yeah. learn something is like it's look it's look like uh, you know it's like this that uh, if you're failing and learning it is not failing yeah it is learning it is learning correct but if you're failing and failing again despite of that learning it is failing absolutely wonderful now that's a great leadership lesson thank you thank you very much so maybe i'll shift gears a little bit now and maybe come a little closer to your business and but more at a macro level uh, we hear a lot about the circular economy we hear a lot about uh, sustainability and clearly mining is one of the industries that is always under a microscope on on this front and yet i know in the adani group you have led uh major sustainability efforts csr efforts you were telling me a little bit about it even before the conversation perhaps could you tell us how you think about it as a leader of the mining industry to integrate these principles of circular economy into your business so i think i'll take this two uh, things separately one is circular economy and second is your sustainability okay so when we speak out about uh, sustainability i think uh, people actually uh, always link it with environment hmm. uh, if you really say what is sustainability i feel it is a balance between three things your uh, connection with environment society and economy hmm. now if you see any project if it is not economically feasible it is not going to remain sustainable for hmm. decades to come if it is going to damage your environment to a level where it goes beyond its pristine level it is not going to be accepted by correct ngos environmentalists or even the local community also if it is not going to have a inclusive growth for the society around that it is not going to help that particular project to continue for longer period to have so for all this project we always need to see as how all these three are getting balanced mm -hmm. now when we talk about mining itself it is it, it is a fact that uh, uh we we sometimes criticize mining and i i see it very often from the person who don't understand that anything which you talk about in 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 the globe talking about yourself also your maximum things are coming are either getting grown up or getting mined correct you talk about uh, this iphone which you're having uh, many of these parts are actually coming from uh, the metals Absolutely. which are getting mined you talk about your cloth uh, there are things which are coming from getting grown up mm. so there are only two ways yeah. uh, to get things uh, uh, in in your life either it is getting grown up or, or it is getting mined. mined so when mining is so essential for you you need to see as it has to be sustainable in a nature when sustain when you talk about sustainability you need to see of how much damage you are making to environment mm. so what we normally talk about uh, 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 mining in our business is that we need to be a responsible miner mm. to make sure that we are sustainable for the future mm. so when we say responsibility uh, we need to show our responsibility towards environment we need to see as how we can work around the environment to see that 
you are getting your mind done with the least impact on mm. environment mm. Mm. similarly uh, how you can come out with better technology initiatives to see that your product your your project becomes highly predictable mm. you know you can have better productivity to have mm. uh, the less number of equipments on on yeah. on the earth in terms of society you need to see as what are the requirements of the society when i was talking about this csr initiatives in yes. the various places talking about a place where it was a tribal area uh, 10 years back is a digital village now where uh, where with the initiatives taken uh, by the foundation uh, your your women working there are working the self entrepreneurs wonderful and these were the uh, ladies who were not uh, uh, educated at that time they took uh, education offline uh, and online and now they are thinking of getting into Uh, uh various uh, graduation courses uh, to become uh, an, an independent entrepreneur right. also right and that has all happened because there was a passion right. there was a desire to see that we work in these three aspects Wonderful. all together Wonderful. now coming on uh, on the circular economy you know we are getting into a copper business now now we understand for copper you need a copper need to have a copper concentrate which comes from a mine that copper concentrate gets converted into copper uh, tubes uh, copper rods which gets used in uh, in many items be yeah. uh, cables uh, be yeah, uh, air, conditioners. air conditioners or yeah. or, or, or 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 many wear and once it gets damaged or once it gets into uh, the scrap you need to make sure that how this scrap come back to right. you to get again melted back and get into a copper form because unlike copper concentrate where you have 25% of copper in this you'll have 65 70% mm. of copper uh, mm. so this is how we are uh, making sure in all the businesses talking about the mining business uh, in mining business we are say taking out coal we are making sure that in the power plants we have the least coal requirement for one uh, unit of power once that is used there we're trying to make sure that how we can use this ash responsibly get taking it to our cement plants we are ensuring that all the waste which is coming out of uh, the power plant is getting used including in uh, say in, in copper you are having a slag which is getting used you are having sulfur which is getting converted into fertilizer so everything is being done in a manner that you are actually yes. rotating and making it in one go uh, similarly if you are talking about water uh, uh, seeing that what are the water scarcity we are going to have we are making sure that the water uh, discharge is zero you're using and reusing this water again again by treating it and okay. keeping it in the system itself Wonderful. so objective is always to see that only you are not only you are focusing on uh, circular uh, economy or a circular uh, or reducing the wastages uh, also to see that how you are going to always remain responsible uh, not for the purpose of only uh, economical reason but also for the purpose of your commitment yeah. to the next generation I think I think the key word in what you said was responsible. Responsible. And 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 responsibility to multiple stakeholders, not just to your shareholders, but shareholder is you know shareholder is one uh, uh, stakeholder. Yeah. Uh, which will get benefited only when Others. you are going to have all inclus all person getting into the inclusive group. Absolutely. Growth. You can't think of growing as an individual uh, uh, at the cost of the yeah absolutely. It has no, the to- total has to be always. very uh, positive no uh, it's it's very heartening to hear these stories dr prakash thank you so much it is helping us you know, in fact yeah. in whichever project we have done in this manner it has actually become a showcase a word of mouth yeah. for the other project to get succeeded and Correct. that's why and so it makes perfect business sense perfect you're business not doing it as charity and it is helping us in, yes. you know when we speak about adani group having a highest uh, grade for uh, education skills it is because of these type of initiative these right. type of is test which we take in all of our businesses that's amazing which is helping us in any new businesses that's to amazing. acquire or to get in and get succeeded yeah. wonderful wonderful so uh, i just want to continue on this theme of uh, the group and its businesses and how you pro- people are pushing the frontiers everywhere I want to talk about industry 4.0 um drones iot sensors and i know from my uh, from my past uh, work experience that technology has completely changed mining in many many ways right so i just wanted to get your perspective on how all of you at adani group are thinking about industry 4.0 how you are applying it what are some of the use cases you are already working on 
that you're thinking of in the future. Be very helpful if you could elaborate. So when we talk about uh, Industry 4.0, uh, we are eventually discussing about bringing technology, uh, 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 whether it is IT, OT, and now getting into AI analytics in the system. Mm. And as a group, we are very clear. Uh, and when we say we are very clear, it is uh, from chairman to all Apex members to all managers and going up to the, uh, the first person also uh, in the group, uh, that without this, it is going to be difficult for any organization to get succeeded or remain relevant in the future yeah yep. so you need to you need to really uh, make sure that everywhere where where you're working you need to have the technology initiative or use cases getting implemented so whether it is a use case or it is a poc being done for any new case which is to be done you need to see that uh, these initiatives are being taken up yep. and people are fully convinced that it is not going to be a conventional way which is going to help you. You have to change the way you're thinking, that you're working. You need to bring AI into the system to let better options available with you to take a decision. Yeah. So uh, if I speak about the mining business, uh, drone is something which is yeah. a old uh, it's thing really now. Old you know, now. It's yeah. old thing yeah. now. You know, <laughs> Even though uh, it came only a few years back, but having a survey by drone, you know, you understand Earlier, uh, the safety of an OB dump, when I say, say OB dump, it's like a hill. Yeah. Uh, you take out OB overburden from yeah. a mine and you put it on a surface, so it becomes like a hill. The safety of that, because it's a loose soil, safety of that was normally get, uh, getting monitored through various small, small parts at mm. uh, the site. I see. Or by manual, uh, manually checking whether it is sliding or not. Now, with the help of drone and with the help yes. of drone survey, you can do it in minus time the activity which was taking earlier the seven days time wow so two things is uh, have started happening now one is that you're saving time saving money and secondly you're getting a better results by using a technology yeah now that has become a part of mining life yeah. for everyone now absolutely now uh, earlier uh, people used to uh, uh, have this uh, truck and this is truck and shovel business so uh, you used to have four trucks you used to have 20, uh, sorry, four shovel and 20 trucks for operating uh, one mine. Mm -hmm. Now, because of this OITDS, which actually tells uh, the trucks as on which shovel it has to go mm -hmm. on the basis of availability at that shovel in terms mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. the movement, you can reduce this 20 to now 12, 13 also, wow. which is actually not only saving you money, improving your productivity, but also helping you in safety aspects. Yes. Because on the in the area where you were earlier operating with 20 uh, trucks, you are going to operate with 12 trucks. Absolutely. So, I think uh, considering that Adani Group has been always being known for not going as per the conventional thinking and always trying to do something uh, different, something yeah. new, something better, uh, we are actually geared up to uh, really go for Industry 4.0. Now, we've talked about a wide variety of things, right? We talked about you're, you're thinking on circular economy, on sustainability, the more the broader sense of sustainability, ESG type of thing. We've talked about how you're using technology. Maybe to just close off this conversation, could you tell us how you are thinking about your business? Where will it go? What will you make it happen? What will you make happen in, let's say, two years from now, three years from now? I think, uh, you know, natural resources comprises of many businesses. One is mining. Uh, not just to... Uh, talk about mining, I think biggest challenge uh, we have is the talent now. Mm. Why talent? Because people are not interested to go into a remote area and yeah. work in that difficult. Uh, That's so true. How can you make that attractive. look so attractive? And I'm talking about uh, this young guys who are going to come now. Yes. You know, how you can have the mining getting done through a control room. You know, we have, uh, the second business I'm going to talk about is all by control room, but when we speak about mining, how can you control and take decisions sitting in a conference mm. room, good mm. conference room or good Correct. control room and taking a decision is something which is going to happen. So uh, really, if I talk about mining, I really want this mining not to be remain like what we have seen in a movie yeah. called Kalapata, yeah. uh, uh, but to, uh, to get into a situation yeah. where just like a power plant or just like yes. a uh, copper plant, it, it gets run through a control room. Uh, we have autonomous trucks and autonomous uh, machines operating there. 
but everything getting uh, control with sitting on a uh, panel. Uh, uh, you need to see as how you can increase the productivity of uh, everything. So, 10 years down the line, uh, you need to see that how you can become uh, the cost-effective uh, mining company uh, with a clear focus on environment and community engagement. So, when I say sustainability, I uh, always uh, push people to see that the focus on community and um, uh, and environment also. Fantastic. And as far as the metal is concerned, uh, uh, we need to keep on seeing as how I we can uh, take out everything which is going into the waste. Mm -hmm. You know, earlier people used to take out only gold and silver. Now you have 20 items which is there correct, in, uh, correct. in uh, the new copper action. slag. Yeah. Uh, if you can take out everything out of that uh, copper slag, it is going to help you in increasing your uh, uh, value of the uh, product. So that's something if you can do, uh, reduce the wastage as much as possible, use the technology as much as possible uh, uh, to have a better control, uh, not only for the pur uh, purpose of productivity, but also for the purpose of safety and uh, bringing a good talent also. Wonderful, wonderful. As the son of a mining engineer, my father was a mining engineer oh, from great. Leeds. Oh, great. And uh, I I saw him working in mines. He was in the Chirimiri mines. I was yeah, born there. Uh, that, uh, Pradesh. Chattis, Chattis, yeah, now, Chattis, now Chattisgarh. Yeah, now Chattisgarh, yeah. And uh, he left mining because it was considered an unglamorous industry and all that. And I know my grandfather was a big guy in the mining industry in those days. But to bring, as you said, how to bring back mining as an attractive profession, one of the ways is, as you are saying, to make it a high-tech industry. It's a, it's, a, it's a technology industry which does mining, right? And so I think there's autonomous vehicles and the mine of the future. I was lucky to see a mine of the future um, sort of a demo and exhibit by Rio, Rio Tinto. Uh, they're they're the pioneer in terms of autonomous. Yes. Uh, but you, you need to have a mix of autonomous. And, and some, yes. Because, you know, you need to also take yeah. care of the employment. Uh, exactly. Uh, Plus, uh, our context uh, is very different. Context and, is very different, very different so. in terms of what is happening there in Australia and yeah. what is happening in India. I say, just it's, it's just to, saying, as, uh, as the son that, of a mining engineer, I'm thrilled to hear what you're saying. I know from where it actually came. So, when my son actually uh, went for undergrad, undergrad uh, after first year, he uh, was offered the uh, you know this the function this this teams uh -huh. and he got uh, mining Achha. he said no i'm not interested in mining uh -huh. so i said you know even though i'm also a mechanical engineer but i'm looking after this mining as yeah. a ceo yeah if my son is saying that i'm not interested in mining how i'm going to take exactly. it to the people exactly that was my uh, trigger point trigger point to see that how <laughs> i can now Wonderful. really make it uh, so good for the young generation you know Wonderful. you can always get experienced guys yeah. in the system but how you can make young guys exactly. actually getting yeah. attracted to mining is something yeah. which... No, wonderful, wonderful. All the best, Dr. Prakash. We'll be, we'll be cheering you from the sidelines. Uh, thank you, thank all you the very much. best in your endeavors. Thank you so much for thank your time. You. Thank you.